Teachers of Reddit, what's the saddest thing you've ever found out about a student? A student disappeared for a few weeks. I found out later she tried to kill herself. Her mother's boyfriend had been raping her every night for years. She never came back to school. That the reason that my grade 12 student was falling asleep during math class was because he was working 40 hours a week to pay his parents bills. I saw his pay stub. He was a great kid too. I had a very smart kid failing my class because he wasn't turning in any homework. When I asked him why he told me he lived in a hotel room with 12 other people. There wasn't space. And it was too loud for him to focus. Comma. I had a student who lived at the homeless shelter. She was an A student. Super nice kid. And had a baby. Her mom came into the shelter drunk and got them all kicked out. Another student. Also an A student and just the nicest person told us that she couldn't go to her senior prom because her mom couldn't pay the electric bill. So all of her money that she worked for had to go to paying bills instead of a dress. The teachers pitched in and helped her go. Because if anyone deserved a nice prom, it was her. Science teacher here was doing a unit on genes. Had students do a pun at square for their blood types with their parents. Student came to me with a problem. Her blood type didn't reconcile with her father's. I asked if she was sure and she was. So I told her she should ask her parents about it. At the end of the unit she told me she was was the product of rape. It put her on a downward path and led to a lot of fights and her parents splitting. I lost track of her when she moved to high school. TL. DR Science Lab turned into a lifetime movie. Edit. Yes. Editors. We don't do that lab anymore. When I taught second grade, I had a student who walked kind of funny. It took me about a week to realize that it was because his shoes were too small. I got him some new shoes at Kmart because kid shoes are cheap. I told him it was so he would be able to run really fast in gym class. I found out he was living with his grandma because his dad was in prison for killing his mom. I started buying him clothes after that. At the end of the school year, I was packing up some boxes and one of them said snacks. The boy looked at me with great big eyes and asked if I really had snakes in the box. I cried over the fact that I promoted a kid to third grade who really couldn't read. Not a teacher, but I volunteered in an after school program that tutored kids. My group was 14-15 years old. So, I have this extremely bright kid in my group. When we talk about anything else it was clear that he was super smart. When we did homework together he was doing great and understood everything perfectly. He even helped the other kids. However he would fail every single one of his tests. And not just a few mistake here and there. On a few subject. No. He totally completely falling every classes. It didn't make sense at all. So there had to be something else going on. I talked to my supervisor about it. And he promised me to look into it. Turn out his older brother had been held back and they were in the same classes. The father would eat up the younger one every time he had better marks than his older brother. Because Yo was making the true heir look bad. I found out she was used as a human shield when her father was arrested for murdering her mother. 7 years old. One student I treated had bone cancer. He had his leg amputated and that's why I was teaching him exercises for his stump and prepping him for his new leg. He said he wanted to be a meteorologist. Two years ago I found out that another tumor grew on him but that time. On his head. He died shortly after that. 7th grade student lost an older brother to a drive-by. After a few months I was told they had lost two other siblings the same way a few years earlier in elementary school. Three years down the line and his name was in the local newspaper for killing an 11th grade boy for his gang. That year I had the 11th grade boy's little sister in my class. I had a student, 16, who would stay after school with me on Fridays and offer to help out in my classroom. She wasn't a particularly good student and didn't seem to like me. So I never understood why she stuck around. The following school year, her mother got arrested for prostituting her three daughters, including this student. I wish she had said something or I had thought to ask questions. Teacher's assistant here. The elementary school I work in has a 53% free and reduced lunch population. A first grade teacher noticed that one of the Hispanic non-English speaking kindergartners would come to school wearing oversized, beat up sneakers. With her own money, 
She went out and bought a pair of sneakers and a couple of pairs of Spider-Man socks for him. She took a guess at his size. Being a mom, she had a good idea. He loved his new sneakers but didn't know what socks were. He asked her what they were for. She had to explain what they were used for and help him put them on. Boy. Did his face light up. My mom is a public school teacher. She has told me some super sad stories about her students. At least three a year. One kid had some disease where he had really brittle bones. He was in a wheelchair she said it would break her heart because he would say that he just wanted to be a normal boy. To run and play like the other boys. She has a little girl in her class this year. Her mother was a drug addict. Her father was trying to break the mom of her addiction by I guess locking her up in a room. While the drug dealer showed up to get his money the dad answered the door. Him and the dealer started arguing. He shot her dad while the little girl was holding his hand. It seems like every year she has super sad stories. My first year teaching was in an inner city middle school. About 8 weeks into the school year, I confiscated a notebook from a 6th grader after she smacked another student over the head with it. After school that day, I received a phone call and needed to jot down a note. I opened the spiral notebook to a random blank page and wrote down my note. Then ripped out the page. I turned around in my chair and graded papers for a while. And then turned back to take a drink. I was leaned back in my chair, taking a long pull of coke. And letting my eyes wander about until they landed on the word pussy written in the notebook. I was so startled that I nearly choked on my coke. So it took a minute for me to regain my composure. Sit up and take a good look at the page. It was a note to the student's best friend. Explaining in great detail about, edit to add, how, her own grandmother performed oral six on her quite often. And how great it felt. And how she, the student, would do it to her best friend as soon as they had a chance. Yes, I called the authorities. No, they didn't take the child out of the home. Another student was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a disease wherein the muscles turn to jelly from the legs up. People with this disease live up to about only their teen years. Up until their breathing muscles hold out. He was 7 then. I was in a class in middle school where we had to write a short piece on what we'd wish for. One of my classmates had wrote a really good one about how he'd wish his sister didn't die in a house fire when he was very young. The teacher went up to his desk and she hugged him. I would have too because that it was real. Yo. One sixth grader told me his father killed his puppy by putting it in the dryer. Another student was living in a four man tent with her mother and two dogs for months. They put it in a hole with chicken wire around it to keep the dogs from getting out. They ended up going through Hurricane Irene like that. I currently have another 6th grader in need of a place to live because his mom is a drug addict who can't take care of him. She also blames him for DCF investigating because he mentioned his home life to his therapist. I had a student with severe depression and a really crappy home life. Her mom was more interested in partying and sleeping around than being a mom. To prevent her daughter from telling anyone what was going on. The mom told her that she would be taken from her family, locked in a padded room, drugged so she couldn't walk, and kept in a mental hospital for the rest of her life if she told anyone anything, and the kid was terrified. Fortunately, we found a drawing explicitly expressing suicidal thoughts and were able to get her the help she needed before she attempted. We also reported her mom for neglect and the kid was placed with other family members in a more stable situation. I'll tell a story a teacher friend of mine told me, and it really messed with me. She had this little girl in her class who was known to act out a lot so they'd gotten used to knowing how to settle her down etc. One day she seemed to be extra difficult and when they sent the kids off for lunch, the girl came up to the teacher and clung to her leg asking if she could have some food. Turns out she'd been sent to school with no lunch or money. She also hadn't had any breakfast. Oh. Or dinner the night before. I really really hate people being hungry. It upsets me more than most things and the thought of this little girl starving and not understanding why nobody would feed her messed with me for days. And it still gives me a horrible feeling now when I remember it. My mom was a high school teacher. Two of her students, not at the same time, came to live with us. As far as I know, this was heavily abused by his father. Pretty sure his father didn't give a crap that he moved in with us. 
M was a senior whose mom moved to another state to live with her boyfriend. M didn't have anywhere to go and she wanted to finish her senior year. S became best friends with my brother. But my brother didn't really like S's fiance. After the wedding, which we all attended, he was forbidden from talking to us. M is doing great. She moved out to go to college. She had a very difficult time with her brother and her family in general but 20 ish years later she is a missionary married to a fellow missionary with two adorable kids. We lived below the poverty level. But what mom had to give, she gave. Not a teacher. But when I was in the 8th grade we had a little buddy in kindergarten where we accompanied them to church. It was a catholic school and also did activities with them. I got this little blonde hair kid with glasses named Jesse and he was quite the handful. Didn't really seem to get along with the other kids and was always acting out. At first he was tough to try and keep in line, especially at church. But after a while he seemed to take a real liking to me and started listening. We started getting along great and had a lot of fun drawing and coloring together. One day I got to meet his mom before school started. She handed me a present. It was the latest Harry Potter book and thanked me for being such a great buddy to Jesse. Apparently his dad left them and he took it really hard. Which was why he was always acting out. She said that she noticed a change and thinks that me being so nice to him had a lot to do with it because he would talk about me to her. Mother was dying of breast cancer. All she wanted to do was make it to her son's graduation. She didn't make it. 1. A student. At the top of his class. Committed suicide. He would get so anxious about tests. 2. Countless students moved into psychiatric care. 3. A student who was homeless and expectant father trying to graduate after dropping out 2x. That one ended well. But it was shaky for a bit. Just want to say thank you to the teachers here. My mom is a teacher and it is impossible not to see the emotional toll she endured taking care of these children who had families who were struggling to get by. Or had parents in jail. Or simply were not cared for. It can be a very rewarding but difficult job. Thanks. We had a student get adopted by a great aunt. CPS had found the girl when she was 5 locked in a closet with one older brother and one younger brother. She was always so sad or insanely angry. She was often non-verbal. Eventually, we figured out that there had been a younger sister who had died in the closet. CPS and the aunt confirmed the story. When the littlest one was born, the girl I knew had done her best to take care of the baby. But baby just couldn't drink that Kool-Aid. Buried but I teach in an alternative high school. 40% of our students are sexually abused or recovering drug addicts. It's really rough. We have one student in particular who is pregnant with a child that she has elected to keep even though it was a result of rape. She's a tough kid. It's humbling sometimes to remember that even though these students are young, it doesn't mean they are too young to suffer. I learn more from them about being a resilient human than I would anywhere else. I'm lucky to work with them. Preschool. Yeah fun times. Noticed a girl with clear behavioral issues come to school on Monday in her Friday outfit. She's covered in filth. And even her hair has food stuck in it. Give her a clean up of paper towels and warm water. Have my assistant change her clothes. Mail here. Miss K does that. And wrote a report for documentation. Just in case. I come back from my lunch break and protective services has already come in and taken her away. I'll never see her again or know what was going on. All I know is that mom had weekend rights. Makes me sad still. But also makes me continue to write those reports. Preschool is fun. I'm not the teacher. I'm the kid. When I was a kid I was abused. A few teachers would realize it. Anyways. I never had lunch at school. And I didn't qualify for free lunch. Because my mom didn't care enough to make sure I ate. I was probably one of the skinniest, least nourished kids in the school. A teacher found out that my mom just wouldn't give me lunch and food at home was scarce. So she bought me lunch every day I was at school for two years. I looked like the home alone kid so the way I repaid her was to do the aftershave scream face to make her laugh. She said laughter was a form of payment. Since I refused to take free food she had paid for. This thread just makes me want to quit my job and become a mentor. So many people in this thread that are quite simply a better person than I. I had a student who was looking down. I asked her if she was okay. 
she started bawling and collapsed into my arms. And all she said was I miss my mom. Unknown to me was the fact that her mom had died just a few months before. I had a student with some minor behavior issues. And also would zone out a lot. He was also incredibly small for his age. I discover later that he was adopted and had a traumatic childhood. Born addicted to drugs. ETC. Because of his trauma and behavior issues. He was on large doses of ADHD medicine and medicine for seizures. This medicine turned him into a zombie. Mommy was a meth addict who was in and out of jail. And daddy came to pick up reeking of pot and referring to mommy as that itch to his son. And no idea what he was seeing at home. But he was pervy towards the little girls. This is a 4 year old trying to sneak in the bathroom with them multiple times. Making inappropriate gestures. Asking if they wanted to see his privates or if he could see theirs. I work at a daycare. And one of our 4 year olds had just became a big brother. There were some kind of complications with the birth that left his little sister in the hospital for a really long time. Maybe even like 2 or 3 months if I recall correctly. I didn't want to be nosy and ask too much. But I had heard from my co-workers that the baby was starting to do better and was going to get to come home. A couple weeks later. I found out that the baby had died over the weekend. If that wasn't bad enough. The little boy came up and told me my baby sister is an angel now. And I don't want her to be. I want her to be a kid. Broke my heart so bad. Few years ago my uncle was off in Iraq with the army. His wife ran off with some drug addict boyfriend leaving my uncle's teen stepdaughter to watch her three siblings. While working to help pay bills. She did a fabulous job. Somehow through all that she discovered that she has about a dozen other half sibling by her biological dad. She has since tracked them all down started relationships with them. She has gained legal custody of at least three of them to get them out of the foster system. She's currently a MGR at a fast food taco place and is incredible at life. Finally she is at a place where she is going to start college. She's about 24 now and study to be a social worker. I don't have many heroes. But she's top of the list. I taught a 10th grade biology class in one of the poorest urban neighborhoods in America. A girl who was always sleeping during class. Came to talk after class on day because she was upset about not being able to finish her science fair project. Something to do with mold growing on bread. She couldn't get her data because the rats kept eating her bread. The rats in the kitchen she slept in. The kitchen she paid to sleep in. The kitchen she paid her aunt to sleep there because otherwise she would have to share a bed with an unsavory family member. She made money to sleep there by being picked up by a van at night and driven to a club to dance with men for a dollar. She slept in class because most nights she wasn't in the kitchen with the rats. She was dancing with men twice her age till morning. And this all came out because she was upset about her science fair project. But honestly, this isn't even the saddest thing. There are so many of these stories. Which is why I hate anyone who has any ideas why public schools are failing or ideas on why urban youths can't just get their act together. The worst thing is now I just remembered a dozen other students and I want to get drunk. I went to the same school as Amber Dubois when she went missing. A lot of the teachers took it pretty hard. I teach in high school for background. I was sitting at my compute one day placing grades in or something and overheard a few students chatting about what they thought they were getting for Christmas. Everyone was excitedly chatting about what they might get and this one girl never really spoke up. Finally someone asked her what she was getting and she looked at them and said nothing. My parents have been working like crazy to make ends meet and they would just all have some type of meal together on Christmas. The other kids were shocked. She was so content listening to the other girls talk about what they might get. Kind of like living through them almost. The girls changed topics and talked about something else after that. At lunch I ran out to the local Walmart and grabbed a Visa gift card. Got a card and wrote an anonymous thought you could use this kind of thing in the card. I ran it to my principal and explained the situation. The principal called her down and gave her the card. She never knew who did it. I noticed when we returned to school she was rocking some new shirts and what looked like jewelry. The same group of girls noticed and asked her about it to which she excitedly said she was surprised with them. Edit. Typo.